Never in history had a single shot so changed the fate of a continent. Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, are assassinated on a visit to Sarajevo, sparking a conflict that would engulf the world. One by one, the dominoes fall. The great empires desperate for influence are eager to tip the balance of power in their favor. Demanding retribution, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia provoking Russia and Germany to stand on opposing sides. As war reaches France and Belgium, Britain honors its treaties and musters its forces. Europe is now at war. Countless thousands of professional and reservist soldiers would march toward their fate onto the Franco-Belgian border. It would be a conflict like none had seen before. Technology would change the landscape of war and the scale of violence in such a way as to usher in a new world. Within four months, gone were the cavalry charges and battle lines of old. Now dominated by the thunder shock of artillery and the blistering hail of machine gun fire. This new reality would force entire armies to dig deep into the dirt and fortify their position with a line of trenches. The measure of victory now to be drawn in inches. Thus the Western Front was established. From the fields of Flanders to the borders of Switzerland, the great nations would make their stand. The fate of millions was now in the hands of a few. Western Front. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at the full release of the Great War Western Front. Leaning heavily into real-time strategy tactics and also some elements of turn-based strategy tactics, this game, taking place obviously during the First World War on the Western Front, features both the Allies slash Entente and also the Central Powers focused obviously on the Western Front. Now this game has multiplayer and a skirmish mode and historical battles that, for example, lets you play the Battle of Verdun without having to play the full-fledged campaign. However, the full-fledged campaign, which we'll see today, does allow you to not only fight each individual battle or auto-resolve if you'd like to, but also allows you to make your own decisions. If you want tanks in 1915 for the Germans and you want them to be heavy, or if you want aircraft that can drop uh, gas bombs or something on 1914, you can do all sorts of different research in the campaign. And it is bloody and brutal and very, very hardcore because obviously seeing all those troops rush towards an enemy machine gun, a group of two on a machine gun can wipe out a group of hundreds rushing towards the trenches in, in the front lines. It's messy and so was the Western Front and the Great War as a whole. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so so you don't miss out on this and many more strategy games on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for this and many other games. Even now, I think World War I is still overlooked by a lot of uh, games and gamers and not a lot of people interested in it or just simply don't know, though we are getting more exposure into this war. It's really interesting to be able to see how things unfolded, both from a historical point of view, from all the cutscenes and information that we get during the game, and also to change things to our liking and kind of learn how tactics could have been different by making our own decisions. All right, let's jump into the campaign and let's take our first look. With the death of the Archduke, Europe is propelled into chaos. Nations honoring treaties and alliances forged years before are now plunged into a conflict they cannot avoid, sparked by a single gunshot. Here on the Western Front, nations draw their battle lines. The central powers of Austria-Hungary and Germany now face the combined alliance of France, Britain and their colonies the Great War is about to begin. General, sir, we have word from General Hay. The BEF have successfully crossed the channel and halted the German advance. But the Germans have established trenches along the northern crest. Machine guns and artillery barrages are proving far too lethal for open warfare. That and they have us trumped on heavy weaponry. Owls cannot stand up to their quantity, caliber or range. Our counter-offensive had them pushed back from the Marne. 
What of our efforts to encircle them? They have the higher ground here, sir. What of the French? We have retaken the eastern tip of Chemin Etape, but further progress has been negligible. We are at an impasse out there, I am afraid. Send word to our men to entrench also. Sir, I fear we may not have the experience for this type of warfare. Have heavy artillery rushed over from England. We cannot risk another retreat like at Mon. It looks like we'll be settling in for the long haul. We must push back into Belgium. If we don't outflank the enemy, then we will be at a stalemate. Thus the Western Front was established. From the fields of Flanders to the borders of Switzerland, the great nations would make their stand. The fate of millions was now in the hands of a few. All right, welcome to the campaign. So this is the beginning of the Allied campaign, the Entente in 1914. We also have the choice of beginning in 1916, as you saw earlier. And of course, we not only have the ability to command on the level of the theater, but also on the level of the battlefield. So in other words, of course, this is our kind of more strategic view of the overall war. And then each of these hexagons will be a battle that can be played for each section of territory whether it's a large city or an important river crossing or an important hill or in this case like calais with a port calais there next to dunkirk hmm, where have i heard that before i'm sure that won't be important in the future but all these other little objectives and other positions held could be significantly important so long as we wipe out the enemy forces there so let's go ahead and advance uh somewhere around maybe ypres or uh, maybe into lulay which, uh, of course, will be very important in the Second World War. But for now, these are just uh, kind of little-known places. You can already see the devastation across the battlefield, too. And it's already snowing, December 1914, of course. So our goal, then, is to demoralize them. So as I mentioned, it's not necessarily about taking large cities, but really to try to uh, possibly encircle the enemy. So, for example, we could push up into Bastogne and then push west towards, uh, I don't know, maybe... Um, I don't even know how far we could push, actually, to encircle them. But if we were to somehow connect Ypres with, uh, let's say, Verdun, and all this section was taken, the enemy would be completely cut off, and that would be a massive victory, even if we were to squeeze them. So uh, in terms of this type of battle, it's not necessarily about each individual hexagon, but overall, the large war at hand. All right, let's go ahead and get our forces pushing uh, where I mentioned before. We can, of course, move our forces from any other position. But here, I think this will be the best to push uh, where the enemy's already been, I'm assuming, artilleried. Uh, a lot of these flames on the field I don't think are for decoration. They're also to kind of showcase where the enemy's morale is or where they've been uh, kind of demoralized by attacking already. So they might be tired, they might be low on ammunition or supply, and it's a good idea to counterattack right away. So let's go ahead and do that and see how it'll uh, play out. Okay, so we have ourselves a uh, worthy attacking force with about... Uh, 80 groups of infantry, artillery, and uh, heavy artillery at four. And it looks like we are probably going to likely win this one. Yeah, if we were to do an auto-resolve, we would likely win. But in this case, we'll just engage in battle and see how it plays out. So taking command of both the British and the French forces here. And then if we play as the Germans, we also get the uh, advantage of the central powers and the differences between their uh, forces and uh, man, there's some really cool differences here, especially in each year of the war. So it's not necessarily just about uh, the beginning war and it kind of continues on with infantry, but of course other technology being used like bigger and better artillery, bigger and better aircraft and bigger and better tanks and tank anti-tank guns all the way up until the end of the war, uh, especially with the United States entering. So that is a force that you'll see later in the game. The United States is here. And of course, most of the Western powers are here. Um, so it's pretty interesting to see them all on the field. All right. Well, it is winter. Our main objective here is to hold the rail line and also this uh, road here. What I like about this game a lot is it reminds me of like a 1990s uh, turn-based strategy game. But this is a real-time strategy game aside from the overworld map. That, of course, playing out in the course of uh, maybe weeks or days rather than it being just uh, in real time second by second. Which is kind of cool because the overall war would be determined by weeks and those weeks would be determined by each individual battle. All right, so you can see here where we've already got some trenches dug out by the Allied forces. We can add to these and also add uh, firing trenches and other things like machine guns. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, here we have ourselves an MG nest, heavy artillery, light artillery, and even an observation balloon. So we can launch that and take a look at where the enemy's 
coming from. Now, our goal is to attack, but the enemy could also uh, attack too, so it's very important that we have trenches to defend, so that way the enemy doesn't push towards Alpha on our left, the central position that we saw near the rail line, and also on the right side at Bravo, near the hill. Now, you can also see all the little tents and stuff that everybody's set up with down here, so obviously we don't want the enemy to get anywhere near our staging area. Important that we keep them back. So I think our jump-off point and first point of attack will probably be on the right flank. We have quite a bit of a push up here towards this hill, and the enemy, of course, could change their defenses before the battle. So we're going to go ahead and start to put a few forces here and try to entrench on this side so they're ready to go. So we'll go ahead and start with our infantry, and we'll see if we can kind of uh, set them up to be into those trenches at the start of the war, or the battle. Alright, so all French forces there for now. Let's go ahead and get some machine guns up, just in case the enemy attacks. And that'll dig little trenches onto those as well. There we go. And let's get some artillery. And these are positions that will be dug out at the start of the battle. We can also rotate these positions too, so if we want our artillery for some reason to face northwest, we can do that as well. But the guns are capable of turning, uh, just the trench is what you're basically orienting there. Alright, let's go ahead and dig some more trenches. Now, a great thing about this game too is that we can actually have communications trenches connecting uh, different trenches together. So we can have our infantry move. They won't be able to fire from those positions, but it allows them to move fast from one position to another. So in this case, uh, the French could move towards the middle here and then towards the trench in the north. And so as our forces are pushing forward, these two groups could leave this trench and these other four could come in one at a time down the trench and just keep jumping out into no man's land and then eventually uh, reaching the front line. Now, we're going to take an incredible amount of losses, and this game already is on, like, trainee, but this is definitely a very hardcore, very challenging, and very... Uh, I should say, like, realistic battle simulator. It's very incredible at how many uh, losses could be taken just by trying to take one machine gun position. Not everything could always be done with the uh, utmost strategy. Sometimes you just got to push in, and it's uh, quite the sight to see. So we're going to try to get that dug there, too. So we can try to get a few more forces in there. Try to get as many infantry on the front line as we can to immediately hit that right flank. But also we're going to try to dig in on these positions here at the farmhouse and along the road. And also near our HQ. Basically trying to put a squad or two into each position. And where we want to have lighter defenses, we should also have machine guns, or where we think the heaviest fighting will be. Now, I've played plenty and plenty and plenty of warfare games here on the channel from everything uh, World War I, World War II, and, uh, you know, modern warfare games and older historical games, too, uh, that go well back into earlier history. And the interesting thing is that this... <laughs> World War I really combines a lot of that earlier uh, warfare with also kind of more modern warfare with the artillery, of course, supporting rifles and, you know, there's a, a hint of air support. And it's interesting to see how the Great War in many ways shaped today's warfare and, of course, that warfare of World War II. So trying to reverse engineer some tactics here like using observation balloons and uh, other tactics are very important, especially at the start. We're going to try to get a few more units out here. And we'll see if we can deploy them without cover. And we'll get all these units up here right away. All right, let's begin the battle and see how we go. Uh, we just need to defeat 10 German infantry companies, so we simply just need to take their positions and have them counterattack against us. They'll be demoralized, and then we can uh, basically win this battle. Now, each battle will have different objectives, too, like capturing the entirety of the front line, demoralizing the enemy by uh, eliminating enough of their squads, or possibly eliminating an important objective or capturing an important objective, like a bridge crossing or uh, maybe, maybe a large city. Let's get that balloon up. Now, somebody's in that little basket there. You can actually see them kind of peeking out. And they're providing line of sight to where enemy positions are. So there's certainly a lot of German forces on this right side. So that one artillery group. We probably should have went with much more artillery. Uh, but we'll go ahead and try to strike those positions as soon as possible. As you can see, they're taking a little bit of fire. We're going to try to continue to bring in our infantry. I was trying to bring them in from before. But now we can bring them in from off map. I think they should actually come in from the lower side of the map because of that uh, that's where the uh, train is. But I guess this is them kind of being dropped off a little earlier and then moving up the road or whatnot. 
You can also see where those machine guns dug in. We get access to a lot of different things other than just the machine guns, too. Eventually, mortars and gas. Oh, here comes the German squad. They're kind of upset with us. Well, let the machine guns do their job. And look at how quickly just, like, two machine guns can rip apart an entire yeah, attacking force. I mean, it's within seconds. Within absolute seconds. Within, like, four or five seconds, it's over for them. So you can just imagine what we're going to face with some dug-in positions, even without a machine gun. It's going to be, uh, well, spoilers, it's going to be bad for us. But that does take care of our first infantry company. We could play things out a little bit more strategically. Um, and, of course, we want to be aggressive on the battlefield, too, for pride and honor and such. So a lot of our decisions could be made stupidly just for pride and glory. Looks like uh, two more squads are pushing out. Let's go ahead and try to artillery them as they come across the trench here. And we're going to fire there at two squads that are approaching. Doesn't look like the enemy's going to change their course. Wow. We're kind of using that to shield this uh, frontward assault position, and they're going to have to hit this again. Looks like the enemy is reinforcing that position. Now, of course, we can also use different tactics such as a creeping barrage, and I believe we can also use smoke and a few other uh, tactics with artillery. So artillery is not just necessarily dumb fire on trenches all the time. Let's go ahead and see if we can get these forces to face the correct direction. We can also do our skirmish formation. So right now they're just in a marching formation. They'll move as quickly and uh, effectively towards the front line or the position you give them. And in this case, the skirmish formation will allow them to at least spread out a little bit to last like one second <laughs> longer against enemy fire. All right, let's go ahead and push up and see what happens. We're going to try to get all of our forces for an insane wave. Now, one thing we don't want to do is call up everybody at the same time. I really want to, but it's unwise to do that because only two squads can get in the trenches at a time, and we kind of want to send up a squad to try to eliminate that group. We know we're going to take losses. We know they will die. We don't want them to know that. We're high command. So, you know, it's it, only a few will die, but we know it'll be much greater. So we want to call up maybe four squads to eliminate two, and then another two to finish them off, and then another two. So it's almost like four times as much to capture that position. Let's get to it then. We'll go ahead and call up uh, this infantry squad here, uh, the most forward group. We'll get the second group slightly behind them. And the third group here. Now we know a lot of these troops are going to die, so let's prepare the others for reinforcement. And this is just what you call a small recon squad of about 80 men. Did I say 80? I should have said about 800. Okay, no enemy machine gun positions luckily, but their artillery on the field shows that uh, they probably have this area zeroed in. So they're ready to fire. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. And attack. Now, the enemy can also attack our balloons with air support, so it is completely possible that they could uh, poke our eyes out, for other words, by eliminating those balloons. But this early war, there's not going to be too much of that. And it's a real schlog for the first few years, of course. All right, Group 1 is approaching the trench. Group 1 eliminated, Group 2 going up. And now our goal is just to continue to flood troops into that position until it's been captured. Two enemy squads have now been eliminated. If we have more men on the field than they have rifles, there's a chance that somebody could miss. And we could get one troop inside that trench. Okay, let's have our artillery ready to go. Ah, they have a machine gun. Look at that. And our troops are into the trenches. I believe that artillery fire might suppress the machine gun and the uh, supporting trenches behind for just a short time. And now we have the trench. 
Full attack. We now have a foothold. As in, we've taken one foot of land. Man, that music is really good. Enemies counterattacking. Our additional forces are arriving. Carmouche. And our forces are advancing. Good, let's get another wave ready to go. We've now eliminated six enemy squads. Cool. So remember, all the things that we see here on the battlefield are from previous moves. So as the battle goes on and as the war goes on, we'll have different uh, forces here based on our decisions before this. So the artillery that's available, the troops that are available, the nations in which they're from, the technology that they have. There is a tech tree in this game, too, where we can research things uh, at different years. You can kind of play it historically accurately, but similar to what you see in Hearts of Iron, you know, we could research gas years before, or maybe no forces will use gas, or maybe no one will get tanks out, or one nation will get out tanks. Uh, or super heavy artillery and other tactics that uh, maybe weren't used at all or were used later in the war uh, at a much earlier time. So there's a lot of technology at, at stake here and a lot to research. Let's suppress that machine gun again. And the other infantry behind. We now have, have two trenches again. Reinforces are coming again. Look at how many... I mean, just the absolute disregard for life in these advances. I mean, it's insane. Now, they didn't have tank support. They didn't have really air support or anything like that at this point in time. But, man, it's it's incredible to see how much loss of life would need to be dedicated, dedicated to just taking a position. Oh, back to skirmish mode. Enemy counterattacking again. They've lost eight squads. Fire those guns again. Into those trenches. Keeping that machine gun suppressed. And this is just one sector of one small battle on one massive front. That's that's insanity. And our forces pushing up again. Reinforcements coming up again. Now, I'd really love to see the uh, Turkish front here. Uh, you know, the battles from the British invasion of Turkey or the Ottoman Empire, really, or the Ottoman forces, and also, of course, Italy during this time as well. I think one of the greatest World War I games that taught me a lot about it so far uh, has been Verdun, but there's, of course, been earlier games than that. Uh, talking about the Great War. Verdun, of course, showcasing the battle for Verdun, uh, the several battles on the uh, great side of the Great War on the Western Front, but also, of course, the um, Eastern Front as well with Tannenberg, another game out. And I hope this developer does elaborate uh, or go further into this. I, I hope this game is a success so we can see more fronts, such as the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, I guess the Northern Front or uh, like Isonzo. Another great World War I shooter out showcasing the Italian front. But I hope we get to see a lot more of that. I think it's fantastic to be able to learn a lot of that through actual uh, gameplay. Alright, we're going to push into a new position. We're going to try to make too many movements for the enemy to react to. So we've already completed our main mission objective here. And I think we can now try to push on the enemy main position. So now we're going to get even more reinforcements in. Oh, our supply is severely depleted. Well, you know, honor and glory are expensive. And we must fight for it. Alright, we just need to eliminate the last enemy defenders in the sector in order to capture it. I don't know why our forces are going that way. Must have clicked on that trench there. And here come the final wave of reinforcements. Les 
Mettez-vous en position. Tenez-vous prêt. En position de tir. All right, enemy forces there counterattacking. And I wonder if we can move our observation balloon closer. I'd like to possibly bring that towards the front. Ah, uh, there we go. We now have the position and we are capturing objective Y. All that, man. Attention. Now, some of the other historical battles that are featured here are some of the other major and more uh, famous battles of the Great War on the Western Front without having to fight through all of the campaigns. So at least there's the option to uh, fight some of those and change some of the battle uh, beforehand with different types of deployment. I think you might be able to even choose different years or at least uh, different forces that go in or that are deployed during the battle, which is uh, rather unique to be able to mix it up each time. That way it's a little different each time you play if you choose to do that. All right, forces here are capturing. So we're going to try to punch in on that line. We're going to try to go north. Good job, boys. We've secured an enemy control point. Our men can reinforce from here. Good. All right. All right, now we can also set uh, command groups too. We can, of course, go control one and uh, control this group separately. Uh, but we can also see these groups displayed here and what they're doing exactly if they're enforced. And also the artillery too. Uh, that can be on standby for whenever we encounter a machine gun. All right, let's advance with the northern force all the way behind the enemy. A force directly onto those trenches. And a, diver a diversionary force to run around in circles. I'm sure that'll distract the German forces there. Enemy artillery spotted. Yeah, we're calling in artillery to keep their heads down. They've been heavily flanked. Artillery ending in time. Advance and capture that artillery. Several waves, people. Now we can also get different unit types, like for example, grenadiers that are very good at eliminating enemy artillery by literally throwing explosives at them and destroying them. Enemy counterattacks are inbound. We're losing men at an alarming rate. Not fast enough. Not for glory. Glory is late. We cannot deny it. I'd say the enemy is losing men at an alarming rate now. Keep those forces pinned down. Be moving our forces down the trenches. Attendez les 
Each sector of trenches, of course, is kind of its own little building that we can occupy so we can move from uh, trench to trench, kind of scooting down and fighting for each position. Long, narrow trenches, too. Perfect for hitting with aircraft. They haven't yet developed the whole zigzag pattern to try to, you know, de deflect fire or to try to remain concealed. Wow, we're destroying the artillery there. Wow. All this before even tanks, all this before better artillery and other types of weapons, mostly rifles. Machine guns, of course, at this time are almost, you know, a hundred pounds of gun and water and munitions and other things like that. If depending, I mean, depending on the machine gun, even LMGs weigh about the, uh, are the size of a man. <laughs> it's crazy. More of this destruction happening. Alright, their command trench is ours. They will soon fall. Alright, well, the enemy has uh, basically lost their main force here. And of course, our losses, as you would imagine, should be greater than the enemy's since we're the one advancing. Let's continue to call them more forces. No price is too high for victory. Cool. Move all of our forces there. Wow, we're so close to each other. I wonder if we can kick out a uh, soccer ball. Ah, suppression of barrage will cost us supply, which we've already used a few times. Now, we could call for a ceasefire. That'll end the battle immediately, and the final score is calculated. We will win, uh, but I'm not exactly sure exactly uh, if a full victory will give us any sort of extra bonus. We've completed our base objective of eliminating at least 10 forces, but if we continue with this, our army will be a lot more demoralized, but you can see where the enemy is at here, too. We've only got about four minutes. Might not be enough time. So let's try to at least save some lives. Uh, glory will arrive early, let's say. Ah. Ceasefire. It's not a complete victory. Any progress uh, that pushes uh, the enemy back or reduces his will to fight. Yep. Not a victory that's going to secure the victory of the ultimate war. Wow, look at that. So, a major loss for the enemy and a victory for us. I think if we would have pushed a little bit more, we would have uh, gotten something out of it. But, yeah, you can see a vict yeah, victory. <laughs> All that pushing is a victory. That's about it. Uh, now, to do better, I think we just need to capture more territory faster with uh, less losses. But sometimes... Technology will dictate that, and also the enemy AI movements. Uh, if you happen to take a trench and hold it before the enemy can counterattack, it's obviously considerably more difficult to retake that. So a victory, nonetheless. Enemy down seven, us up one. And uh, we can take a look now at some of the technology, what not to research. We have technology points, so as you can see, we can invest in infantry, flight, trench, engineering, logistics, and intelligence. And each of those kind of give our own... Uh, bonuses and advantage trench of course can be a little bit more in terms of anti-trench warfare and uh, pro-trench warfare so things like uh, for example long-range explosives which could help us to defend against enemy attacks if they're coming towards our trenches or to hammer enemy tr uh, trenches uh, advanced mg training for our troops in our trenches we have things like uh, gas shells and different types of gas too smoke rounds including in a rolling barrage we also have logistics which helps with our supply and also uh, things like uh, I think uh, building and storing things. Yeah, different types of factories and whatnot. We also have intelligence, which would help us to uh, build different types of um, 
or make different types of networks for spying, basically, in uh, counterintelligence or possibly even saboteuring. And that's quite interesting, actually, to see how that would play out. We got blast power for things like grenades. Making the infantry more powerful, I think, is our first and foremost um, ideal and, and probably best thing to do. Really, really important, of course, to get some grenades and or improve sights for our rifles so that way we can try to save some lives. I mean, uh, preserve glory. And then, of course, with flight, that is going to give us bombs and the ability to counter enemy movements. Engineering down here, of course, a little bit more for the, the tanks, too. So if you want to do some tank warfare and get things started, you could literally just invest there. It does look like things increase with points over time. So you start with like one or two and then work your way up to five or six depending on what the upgrade is. Some of them are just one. Uh, but obviously when you're that far down the tech tree, that's gonna be quite important. Looks like we already start with one unlocked regional intel, which makes sense because we get access to our French allies who could be running uh, some uh, maybe insurgency campaigns or whatnot, or at least sharing information about enemy movements. That is just one small battle of the Great War. And that is this is just one small region of it as well or at least one moment in time where, of course, the lines changed many times and trenches changed hands many times during the war, all the way from Belgium all the way down into uh, Germany as well. Interesting. Now, of course, the ultimate goal is to not lose Paris, and, boy, you'd be, uh, it'd be a bad time if you were to push all the way in, but, of course, we get access to the whole German campaign, too, historical campaigns for the Germans. Uh, well, actually, uh, you know, kind of a dynamic campaign, but it all starts out historical, and then you do the research the way you see fit, and then, of course, the uh, historical campaigns, too, that, well, the individual missions that let you play out historical battles. That's quite cool as well. I like it. I think this game is pretty damn cool. I was a little concerned with how things played out when I was playing the demo and the beta, but it's actually smoothed out quite a bit, and I hope the developers continue to add content and uh, patch over and smooth over anything that might be a little rough. But for the most part, this is a pretty damn good uh, compromise between, like, for example, for me at least, um, it feels like, you know, a little maybe Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, but World War One, but a little Hearts of Iron, but more like a turn-based uh, tile strategy game. It's all the things that I like in one. It's a damn casserole of warfare, and it's, uh, it's good. It's ooey-gooey, and it's not perfect. Probably a little unhealthy, but it, it's good, man. I like it. Well, everyone, thank you very much for watching today's episode of The Great War Western Front. I really hope you enjoyed the game and today's video, and thank you very much for being here for the debut of the 1.0 full release version here on the channel. If you'd like to see more, again, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe today if you'd like to, and turn on that notification bell for more live streams and more of The Great War Western Front. I'll see you all next time. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one.